Hi everyone, this is an example from 3.2 for Math 082. So we're working with the zero power rule and negative exponents. So this is a problem, an example that is of the same caliber that you might see on an exam. So the other thing that I didn't write out here um, is that you have to remember the directions are always going to ask you to put everything in terms of positive exponents. So even if there was nothing else that I could do here, I would still need to rewrite it so that all of my negative exponents were positive. Okay, so let's go through and remember our order of operations. So order of operations suggests that we do parentheses first. So you can see that we have some parentheses here. We have 6x to the negative fifth in there and that's being squared. So that's the first thing I need to resolve. There's nothing in the parentheses that can be simplified, so then I'm gonna move on to distributing the exponent. In my previous videos, I highly suggest that as you do these problems, you do not rewrite only part of the problem. I know that saves you a few seconds, but it can cost you points because what can happen is that you forget that that other piece of the problem even exists and then your answer is only a part of the whole. So the thing to remember in this section is that the product quotient and power rules that we learned in the last section are exactly the same. Okay, so just like last time, just like my 3.1 videos, we have to employ the power rule. So we have 6 squared times x to the negative fifth quantity squared. And again, you can see it's a little bit tedious and time consuming. I'm copying the whole entire equation. Okay, it's annoying, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, but it will save you trouble in the long run. Okay, so six squared is 36. Okay, and again, we're using the power rule here to evaluate um, x to the fifth quantity squared, the power rule dictates that we need to multiply those two exponents. Okay, so we have resolved our parentheses and our exponents um, so far. Now we need to kind of look at multiplication and division. So hopefully you can see up here this numerator, I'm not gonna lie, is kind of a mess, okay? So you can proceed however you want to. What I like to do when things are so messy like this is I like to rearrange things. I remind myself of the commutative property of multiplication, which basically says that my order of multiplication doesn't matter. This is convenient when you're memorizing your times tables because you don't need to memorize two times three and three times two as separate multiplication facts. They're actually the same multiplication fact. So you end up memorizing about half of the multiplication facts that you would have to otherwise memorize. So let's all say thank you to the commutative property. So as I look at this expression, I try to look for terms that actually can get combined or multiplied together. So the first thing I notice is that there's a four and a three. So I'm going to rearrange the furniture. I'm gonna move those so that they are adjacent to each other, which is gonna tell my brain, hey, you can actually do this multiplication. The next thing I see is x to the negative fifth and x to the positive third. So again, I'm going to just set those little guys next to each other so that I can use one of my exponent properties. And then last but not least, I'm doing the same thing I guess I should have colored over those first with my y values, okay? And again, I don't want to nag you guys or anything, but it's so easy with these kinds of problems to make mistakes. So just take the extra few seconds and write the rest of the problem out, okay? All right, so 4 times 3, 4 times 3 is 12. All right, then we have x to the 5th times x to the, I'm sorry, just kidding, <laughs> x to the negative fifth times x to the positive third, okay? Think about it, this is the product rule. The product rule says that we must add these exponents, okay? Negative five plus three is negative two. So this is gonna give us x to the negative second power, okay? Likewise, we're gonna um, apply the 
product rule here. 3 plus negative 2 or 3 minus 2 is 1. And you guys can decide whether you want to write that exponent 1 there or not. Totally up to you. Okay. So let's see what we have. Let's see if we have any other common bases in here before we do our last step. Remember, our last step is just getting these pesky positive exponents. Okay. So right now, looking at this, I see this x to the negative second power and the x to the negative tenth power. So I feel like I need to use the quotient rule here. Okay, so if I have x to the negative second power divided by x to the negative tenth power, the quotient rule tells me to subtract these exponents. Now this is where your signs can really come around to bite you. <laughs> so I strongly urge you to write out the subtraction problem. Hopefully you can see here you have minus a negative. Minus a negative becomes plus a positive. Negative 2 plus 10 becomes positive 8. Now if I hadn't taken that extra step, you might be tempted to say that this is x to the negative 12th. And I see that mistake many, many times. So again, it's going to take a few extra seconds, but it's going to save you points on the exam to write it out, to write out every step. So take a minute and look at our equation. See if you see anything else that you think can be simplified. So I'm seeing right here that I have a 12 divided by 36. So just to remind you, sometimes students are tempted to subtract these because they're thinking about the quotient rule, okay? If when you were in fifth grade, I said 12 divided by 36, you would remember, oh, <laughs> I have to divide because it's a division problem, not a subtraction problem. But our brain kind of develops inertia and we're thinking about these rules and then we forget what we learned back in fifth grade that 12 divided by 36 and you can use your calculator if you would like to, reduces to 1 over 3. So you can write that 1 there or not. It's totally up to you. Okay, That x to the 8th is in the numerator. And then we have y, or y to the first power. Again, it's up to you how you want to write that. And then we have our 3. Okay, Remember, the x to the 10th, he's gone now because we simplified the x to the negative second power and x to the negative tenth power, okay? So let's look at this and make sure that we have positive exponents, okay? Looking at this, I don't see any negative exponents. So my final answer, I will probably leave off of those ones just to make it a little bit nicer and simpler. So my final answer would be x to the eighth y divided by three.